Hey everyone, it's Mickey Made It, and I'm excited to introduce you to Inspired by Dreams, my preppy streetwear brand. See, this line is all about blending the classic and the contemporary, bringing you stylish pieces that are unique as your dreams. So whether you're hitting the streets or just chilling out with your friends, our collection offers the perfect mix of sophistication and urban edge. Join us in redefining streetwear fashion and let your style be inspired by dreams. Check out our latest collection and become part of the dream today. Greetings, greetings, all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy, Mickey Fenty, AKA Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Okay, today we're doing something a little different. This is a different segment. I call it Money, Power, and Ownership. Vibrant restaurant buzzing with customers now stands eerily silent with chairs stacked one on top of the other and lights out. They, they dealt with problem after problem with the establishment starting at the beginning of the year when they weren't receiving their paychecks on time. So even if you do get a new check, you have to wait two weeks for it, then there's no guarantee. Like I had many situations, I got a new check. It returns the next week. Frustrated staff say the situation escalated in May when their paychecks bounced and they stopped receiving payment altogether. Today, the employees say they're owed several thousand dollars from the restaurant's owners, including Catherine Gonzalez, who says her name is Miss Bell. Okay, so what we've seen here is that this place is closing down and what happens is they can't compensate the workers but it's way deeper than what we think. If you only want to work four hours, it's going to be harder for you to get a house. We busted our behinds because we didn't have the option of going. Whoopi, here is the problem millennials are facing today. If you look from 1980 all the way to 2019, the average home prices, this column is what's important. This was the income needed to qualify for the average home. Every year, even before the 80s, for the past 50 years, the median household income was more than what you needed to qualify until until 2023 where the income needed to qualify is more than the median household income and another thing you have to look at is this column over here which is rent you could rent for just 14 percent of your income 17 percent of your income 16 percent of your income but look when millennials entered the chat 25 percent 25 percent 30 percent this is when rent prices started to go up now millennials could have bought here but what people forget in 2010 the youngest millennial was 14 years old so we're being forced to spend 30 percent of our money on rent as a family where most people renting are probably single because they haven't had a, don't haven't built a family yet and they're spending 40 percent of their income on rent so this everyone wants to talk about inflation and that's always been the same up and down no it is a supply and demand issue with the housing market that's driving the prices up plus the interest rates is making with housing tax and student loans 70 percent of millennial and gen z's income has gone to just those three things your college back in the 80s and 90s was four five six thousand dollars for a four-year college it is 40 now If you only want to work four hours, it's going to be harder for you to get a house. We busted our behinds because we didn't have the option. Oh, Jesus Christ. First and foremost, Whoopi Goldberg, shut up. Stop speaking. You have been rich for the last 40 years. You don't get to hop on TV and speak on anybody's lifestyle at all. Shut up. I am so sick of boomers and older people and everybody in that category calling Gen Z and millennials lazy. Like we're just some generation of people that don't want to work. We just want everything handed to us. We're just super entitled. Cut the bullshit, stop the cap. That five, $600, $700 apartment that you had when you were in your 20s, that apartment that you could afford and still save money to buy a house one day, that house that was 30, 40, $50,000 when you were little, triple that, quadruple that. That's what we're paying nowadays. With, with wages that don't match the increase in pricing. Let's talk about that. The wages, they don't match the increase in pricing at all. So I don't wanna hear y'all say we're lazy and we're entitled, we are working.
most of the people I know are working 40 plus hours a week, 50 plus hours. Some are working 60 plus hours a week. And then when they get their paycheck for their hard work, they pay their bills and then they hope for the best until their next paycheck. So don't look at us like we're lazy and crazy because we're pissed off about the state of the economy, the housing market, groceries, everything like that. A friend of mine just told me she went to Chili's last night. Two drinks, two meals, and dessert, a hundred plus dollars. I started to cry. I don't know why. When you look at the structure of America, the structure of society, nothing's really built for older people. Everything is built for younger folks, and the reason why it's built for younger folks so they can recycle these deceptional ways of just having people work for them and not, you know, helping themselves. I don't like, or people that I know is fake, or people that I know are just trying to, you know, be cool or be nice just to get in close for whatever reason. I feel like a lot of people, when I say I hate people, it's because I know most people have ulterior motives. They lack morals. You know what I mean? And the shit is just, it's bothersome. It's sad that you can't just trust somebody. You know what I mean? Like you can sit there and give someone the utmost respect today and watch their movements within the next hour and be like, I don't even like this motherfucker. Because it's difficult, because then you feel really disrespected. The most powerful banker in the world just died, and when you study his family, it becomes clear why people can't afford homes and college. The story goes back to the 1700s and a banker named Mayor Rothschild, and he made an amazing discovery that there was more wealth lending money to governments than individual people. And to stay with me, because this will explain why Gen Z can't afford anything. Rothschild would have five sons, who he would send to five different countries across Europe to start central banks. Germany, Austria, England, Italy, and France. And by the early 1800s, the Rothschild family was funding both sides of the Napoleonic Wars which was the real World War I. And funding both sides of wars would become part of the business model. Well, Napoleon would be defeated at the Battle of Waterloo, and the Rothschilds had gotten the news before everyone else. They knew that England won the war. Well, they start selling off all their English war bonds, and they make sure everyone could see them do it. And when everyone saw the Rothschilds selling their bonds, they started to sell theirs. They assumed that the Rothschilds had information that England was going to lose the war. And when everyone started selling their war bonds, the Rothschilds bought them back for pennies on the dollar. And later that week, when everyone else found that England won the war, the Rothschilds basically owned the country. And as Nathan Rothschild said, give me control of a nation's money supply, and I care not who makes its laws. these people they sell their music off like in hip-hop they sell their music off because really they're at a point where they're at a struggle stage in for us finance and if they sell that they feel like they're gonna profit but that they know that if they give those people the money at that certain point that's all they're gonna have whereas they know how to market the stuff that they just bought from those people and it'll be marketing advertisements for years and years to come because the music that that's that's coming out now AI-generated music will be the future of marketed music. So they'll cut out the third person for making the music and they'll just keep it strict AI and then they'll get a better profit on that sale. And people don't see it like that, but that's what's really going on. So AI doesn't cut the job for the, the, you know, for the next generation to come as far as their music. But as far as the music that's already owned, like it's, you know, you hear like, for example, all these, the, the main big hits and jingles that we knew in our time, those are owned by big corporations now. So that jingle can be done over so many different times in AI, and they can sell that back to people. They have no longer ownership. They paid them for whatever they thought it would be worth. And those artists, not knowing that, how far AI can go and how far AI was going to take to the future, they lost out on money for taking that short-term um taking the short-term money not knowing how much they was worth and how much they value and how much they can took took their music with the right ownership of that hit song that they had and then again keep it going on and that could have brought them in money for the rest of their life but some people sold their rights hey you have 244 dollars and 27 cents worth of debt oh you thought you was good 
Nah, go ahead and cook that. And it's also sad because I feel like they they really took advantage of Gen Z because once Gen Z figured out that they didn't want to work for that low amount of money and it couldn't stabilize them, what they started to do was sweep the businesses right from under their feet. In other words, Gen Z right now, their work they have like secondhand ownership. And what I mean by that is they're on platforms that's owned by other billionaires and other people and they're building themselves on that platform. How absurd is the statement that a hundred thousand dollar salary is the new watermark for middle Yeah, you're right, man. A hundred K a year, totally absurd. It's way more than that. Way more than that. Like, I don't know if these guys live in like South Dakota or something, or like a place where like 200 people live total. But if you want to live in a place where people actually live and have lives, um, yeah, 100K is broke status. It's the new broke status. Because when I was growing up, middle class meant that you could afford a home and provide for a family. Like the bare minimum that a person should be able to do. Do you know how much the average home costs in Colorado? $628,000. $628,000. I make over 100K. I live with three guys in a house. I live with three roommates in a house. I have a coworker who cleared $150,000 last year. Now he's moving to Nebraska to make 100K because he can live better off that there than he can on 150K here. He can never afford to buy a house here in his whole life ever. It seems like rich people are trying to like move the goalposts for what middle class means to like being able to afford a studio apartment and save $500 a month. That's not middle class. That's never been middle class. My generation just wants to be able to thrive a little bit, maybe have some fun, maybe take a vacation once a year. It's too much. I go to the grocery store and buy like a rotisserie chicken and a side, and it costs me $20. I'm working 65 hours a week on the road just to be able to afford a little bit to save, to throw aside so that maybe one day down the road, I might be able to stop working for three months and be okay. and just forget retirement. Forget it. Knock it out of your head. You're going to work till you die. Like these old people are always saying, like, just put a little money in your Roth, max out your Roth. You'll have a million dollars by the time you're 65. A million dollars isn't going to be anything when we're 65. By the time we're 50, 500 grand a year is going to mean the same thing that $100,000 a year means now. We're gonna need $10 million to retire and have the same kind of lifestyle that our grandparents are having now with their $1.4 million in the bank living off interest. Like my generation is so cooked. I started to cry. I don't know why. We are so done. And forget student loans. Like I feel terrible for anybody that has student loans. I know what $40,000 in debt feels like. It sucks. They put those loans out like at mortgage lengths, like 20 years to pay off these loans. So in other words, what I'm saying is they have like a secondhand ownership, like you own your name, you own everything, but you're on a platform that owns everything. So that's what I mean by secondhand ownership. And they trick Gen Z into that and subscribe into a lot of these services that would keep them on a chain. And the more you subscribe to things, it's just like subscribing to work a nine to five. You have to be on this cycle of when things have to be done and you have a deadline for everything you do. So it, it takes your time away from you. And that's what's been going on in a lot of companies and they, everybody's fighting for everybody's time. So when I tell you guys, we all have to support each other, it's almost like the same thing. It's making a chain, a circle of money amongst a group of people that can make a substantial living amongst each other. And once you put those great minds together, that's when everybody else from the outside will try to invest in to what is already owned by the people that already built it from ground up and that's what would give you a stable foundation to do anything whether it be a clothing line you have beauty products anything you really want to do you want to open a business sell cars anything you really want to do you'll have the funds and everything in this community of people that you already established this strong foundation of you know money coming in and money coming out and that's the reason why we see a lot of people losing in these times when, it, when they're dealing with their businesses because everybody's in this race to get their products in front of these faces but what they're not understanding there is a 
there is a cap off point to that. So when you think you're making money at a certain point, let's just say you make $100,000, you're never going to get to the millions and millions and millions of dollars without capping off or somebody coming to, into the establishment and trying to add to what you have to take some kind of ownership from you. And in order for you to have that control over that is to start a, a stronger structure with people that you already have grown with. So you don't have to look for outside sources to come in to add, you know, something to take a profit from you. And that's how you'll have a sustainable business. Secondhand ownership is what is confusing people in these times. On YouTube, you might be the biggest star on YouTube and you're paying and getting paid more than the average person. But your standout, you still don't understand the ownership in that can be took and swiped right under your feet because you're on a platform owned by somebody else. So let's just say YouTube is in debt with somebody else out there, maybe whatever bigger company, and they split ties with them and things start to change you no longer have you don't have a foot to stand on if if the rules change and they take your content out because you can't put that on another platform because you're you have secondhand ownership and you want to start something and you want that instant gratification starting a business like fashion or anything like that is not the best thing for you and the reason why i say that these are passion projects for people that could stabilize you know through the ups and downs if you wanted something more like a, something to build your um, your money, I, I would say the best way to do it right now is on their other platforms. That's secondhand ownership. That's what people are doing, like getting money from advertisements on YouTube and putting yourself out there to the public and letting them know who you are as a person. And that in turn also brings in revenue so you guys can build off of that. So you see a lot of times people are, that's the reason why you see on YouTube, there's not really too much space for anybody to do too many things outside of what's going on already because these are things that advertisers are putting their money on and these are the things that's running YouTube so what they when you see somebody say like oh they're the top guy on YouTube that means that YouTube stood behind that person and they had the most recommendations it's not about the views they had the most recommendations and they was put in a place that's the reason why negative energy is it's like almost like taking over the black community and that is what they want the black community to the black community to profit off of and thrive off of is that negative energy. Meanwhile, if you look on the other side, is in, in the white community, um, the, their tops will be like somebody, let's say, let's say a, a Mr. Beast or somebody, and they'll show him in a space like helping people to show people the difference between what they're getting paid for. You see, you have to really take a mind to what's going on. If you're a black owner, you have more things going against you than that you're a white owner of a business. It's how this world works, and I'm telling you guys this from the truth and just the way things are working. Um, you'll see most likely on YouTube that maybe the most the content cr creator that's on the like say a black culture um, content creator, he's more going to be champion for foolishness or just being loud or loud or very promotional. Um, or just um, in your face all the time, um, doing crazy stuff, and they will more promote that type of content for a black um, content creator. Whereas if they, if there's a top white content creator, it's it's more most likely going to be promoted towards maybe like trying to help people. When in reality, it's almost the opposite way around. And. If you really look at it, it's it's a, all the deception of how people want to be looked at on making money and how they want to influence the other people coming behind them to make that money. So if you're making money off of things that's um, just negative and things that's just making people go out of their way or out of their person to do, that's when you'll find a whole leap of people behind you trying to do the same things as you and they, people figure that out. So for example, when I show you things like people are losing their um, properties and things like that, the reason why they're losing their properties because they know that they don't have enough money to sustain it. And it's, and once they take that out, it doesn't matter how many workers you have. It's not like the workers going to help you pay for it. No, you're not going to be able to sustain it. You might have the ownership in the name, but if you have no place to put that on, you become secondhand ownership now. You have to put it, you have to get back into the spaces of where everybody's at and put your product in front of those faces. And that's the trick in these times in society. Everybody's being looked at in different ways and certain cultures are being promoted and people are making money. Some people are making money from making their culture look bad and some people are making money from a deception of how people want their culture to look. 
So um, yeah, that's just what I wanted to tell you guys on just just a little episode that I'm going to be bringing to you in a segment. I'm be, I'm, I'll just call it money, power, and ownership. And if you guys understand and want more of these, just um, you know, like and share this video. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And um, is Gen Z being robbed in these times? And if so, we have a lot of solutions Gen Z could take so they won't get robbed like the people in the past. All right. Until next time, it's your boy Mickey. Made it. Peace.